A decision on one criminal charge brought against two residents of Hikutamake, Pamela Tungiakona and Sionela Poni Tungiakona for actual bodily harm has been dismissed due to lack of evidence by the prosecutor. The high-profile case that involved four residents of Hikutamake has yet to complete for four charges including one for Sionela Poni Tungiakona, one for Desmond Tungiakona and, one and two for Lionel Tahenga. For Pamela Tungiakona, her charge of actual bodily harm was dismissed by Judge Wilson Isaac for lack of evidence. So did the similar charge for Sione Laponi Tungiakona. A representative for the family the incident allegedly happened to said they are not happy with the uh, decision, but if there was a lack of evidence, there is not much a judge can do. He also said he has concerns with the police as to the processes with the incident and does not understand the casual approach taken with their case. Judge Wilson Isaac has reserved his decision for the other four charges against Yonde Laponi, Desmond and Lionel. The case continued the whole day yesterday as seven witnesses gave evidence. Eight police statements and one absent police officer's statement was also read out as well as two statements from ESR in New Zealand. We were unable to speak to the lawyers representing the defendants of the dismissed case. However, Chief of Police Mark Chenery for the police said they cannot comment on yesterday's decision due to the other cases relating to the same incident. We'll bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. Concerns of high shipping costs for the island has changed government's approach instead in requesting the private sector to investigate other options. According to the president of newer Chamber of Commerce, R. V. Rubin, there is complexity with all changes, but all options for a better cost must be weighed to receive the most beneficial results. At the moment, we send a few expressions of interest to shipping companies and uh, looks like the sea is big, but the shipping is very small, the industry. And they're all actually working together. And it's very much like an airline code share. They code share the boat. And um, except with a small company, let's say like JAWS, they just got the agreement for Tonga that they came completely out of uh, the normal big shipping companies. Uh, there's not too many options out there. The only option that will be if another big company will come and we are negotiating with, uh, not negotiating, but talking to people, investigating people from Singapore and from uh, Scandinavian countries, that they might start doing something in the Pacific. The reality is that the boats now are getting bigger, more containers, and small ports, not only us, it's now routes, other countries are paying for it. And we probably need another good year to look at uh, the shipping before we come to a good, solid, reliable option. Reef has been good to us. Uh, they invested money here. Uh, they're employing quite a few people here. Uh, they're reliable. They're supplying the fuel and the cargo, and they come on time. But of course, uh, it comes at a cost. And all of us are paying for uh, our cost of life here is expensive because of a lot of it because of shipping. So we need to get the best deal for all of us. And uh, I think Reef is coming next month to talk to us again and we'll try to renegotiate. We have another year, I believe, that the contract can roll over into. Uh, but we will do uh, lots of work in that year just uh, to look at other options. He said there is also a duration for the committee commission to investigate alternatives to report back. Niwe is not big enough, I believe, to make it viable for two companies to come in. Uh, and that's the reason they signed exclusivity, because they wanted... It's have to work for both sides. We want good service, reliable service at fair prices, and the company want to make sure that they have enough cargo to come here. Mm. Otherwise, they won't be able to commit. Um, beside the fact that we want better rates, we also want to explore uh, other ports, mm. maybe out of Fiji or out of Tonga, out of Samoa, bigger ports that maybe they can feed into us. So it's still a matter of looking into it and getting response back and. Uh, asking people uh, for feedback. Is the main concern from the business sector? Of course it's a main concern because uh, we rely heavily on uh, importation. 
and our business relies on uh, the price of goods coming in, the, the shipping of the goods, and uh, make sure that it's on time as well. It's no good having a really uh, inexpensive service, but not reliable. Or something happens, if it's a small company, something happens to the one boat, what's the backup? And uh, is the company big enough to supply both cargo and fuel? Do they have enough uh, refrigeration equipment on the boat to handle the, the frozen and the chilled goods? Now, the concerns have been, um, has been um, viewed over the last few years, and nothing has happened. I mean, government, we're still dealing with reef. Do you think anything will ever happen? I know we have a, a, a year, pe a, one more year as a rollover period, but do you think it will ever happen? Because this has happened before, where if people were concerned that the cost is still, you know, still up there. I can only say that uh, we will work on it and do the best we can. Nobody can guarantee anything. But I can guarantee you that I will work hard to try to find the best deal for Neil. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and my committee are committed. We are all uh, care about the place and care about the cost of living here. And uh, it's nice enough from the government to say, okay, guys, you think you can do a better job than us? The ball is in your court. You try to look for uh, somebody else to service us. So, I mean, it's fair. We... we we will try, and, and I believe in the end of the day we will try, and uh, I believe we will get uh, better rates. Mm -hmm. And that's in the end what we are after, better rates and uh, a good service. It's important that uh, the goods will come in containers. Mm -hmm. It's important that uh, the company will have a backup, that if the seas are rough, they'll be able to come back. Uh, it's also important that uh, we explore uh, dealing with um, our neighboring islands. We have to take uh, advantage of the peak time, all the agreements that we have free, free trade between islands and, uh, and, and work with it. Reef shipping agreement with Niue government is about to end at the beginning of the year with a one-year rollover period. Students of Niue High School will be relieved as of Monday this week. The Niue High School toilets have now been reopened. Work to repair damages and replace parts of the students' toilets began last week with staff from the Water Supply Division stepping in to work on the toilets. There are approximately nine toilets in the female section and seven toilets in the male section to cater for the whole school. The toilets were closed a few weeks ago due to extensive damage and missing parts making them unusable. Considering the school grounds and toilets are used by members of the public, the plea from the school is to caution responsibility when using these facilities because in the end, if they are not cared for, then the students will suffer. It is a case of taking responsibility when using school property that applies to students and members of the public. The department may also look to have to relook at arrangements for these facilities when in use by the public to avoid such incidents affecting students in the future. To end our news bulletin for tonight, there was a mad brush yesterday as punters eagerly awaited the opening of the new shop in town. G's Mini Mart is located in the centre of town just behind the police station, was busy with a steady flow of customers all day. The shop has a wide range of products from kitchenware, homewares, stationery, snacks, cosmetics and more. Store owner Gina Tukiuha says that it's been a difficult process trying to set up business. But thankfully, with the support of family, their dream is now a reality. The idea is to set up business was in line with government's push for public servants to enter into private sector. The store is situated in two rooms that formerly housed the public library. Business owners have also noted that the space they currently occupy may be a bit tight, but they are looking at asking government for further space on the premises that they may expand and utilise for their business. G's Mini Mart is open during the week from 8am to 5pm and looking at opening on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 7 in the evening. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.